good afternoon good afternoon to everybody how is the audio and video okay fine fine right so we are started the rectilinear motion rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion one dimensional motion or motion in a straight line rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion or motion in a straight line so when we say an object is in a rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion when the body is moving in a straight line then it is in a state of uh, rectilinear motion or then it is in a one dimensional motion okay suppose if this is uh, one point in the space at this point initially the particle is there now from this point the particle is begins to move in straight line in one direction suppose if it is moving in this uh, straight line direction so then this particle is in a rectilinear motion or this particle is in a one dimensional motion okay so when the particle moving in a straight line then it is said to be a rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion now to describe the this rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion we have to use certain terms we can use we are using the certain terminology to study the rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion what are the terms we are using to describe the rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion is so one term we have to use time we are using time quantity we have to use time we have to use time is one term we have to use to describe the rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion at particular in so time is the physical quantity scalar quantity its units si units are seconds so at any instant of time the particle the moving particle is at one particular position or at one particular location it is existing okay and uh, time never be negative time always be uh, positive so it should not negative it should not never negative okay right so we can use this time quantity to define the position of the moving particle at particular moment or particular instant next the other one we have to use to study this rectilinear motion is position or location position or location position or location is the another quantity or another term we are using to define the to describe the one dimensional motion or rectilinear motion what is this position or location defines uh, uh, what represents this position and location about the this moving particle is that so we can always to uh, define the position of the particle or to define the location of the particle for the moving body so first we have to consider a frame of reference system with respect to to one fixed point or with respect to to one reference point we can construct the frame of reference system it is a three dimensional coordinate system so at the known point o i am taking the three perpendicular directions so one direction i am taking the x axis one direction i am taking the y axis and one direction i am taking the z axis so now with respect to to this uh, reference system so with respect to this uh, frame of reference so we can specify the 
position of the moving particle at particular instant for example here at some moment at some moment at means some instant at some instant the particle is at one point in the space so this point position we can specifying with this reference system with the origin of this reference system so to specify this point position with respect to origin of this frame of reference system we have to construct the position vector we have to draw the position vector of this point a okay for example point a position vector from this origin is suppose r1 bar so the particle moving particle at particular instant when that instant the time is uh, some instant time t1 or t1 seconds at that instant it is at point a so then now this particle is begins to move from this point a by one particular path suppose it is moving along this path to it is moving along this path a c b and it is coming to another point b it is coming to another point b at a time t is equal to another instant at t is equal to t2 okay so at instant t is equal to t2 it is reaches the point b so then at this instant uh, the particle is particle is at point b so its position we can representing with uh, so position vector drawn from origin of coordinate system so that is r2 bar so here to define the the moving body position or to define the moving body location we need to construct the cartesian coordinate system frame of reference system so we can construct frame of reference system at one known point at known fixed point that is a reference point at the reference point we can construct the three dimensional coordinate system that is frame of reference system with respect to, to this frame of reference system we can define and we can specify the position or location of moving particle at a different instants the moving now in this diagram the moving particle when instant time is equal to t1 it is at position a point a whose position vector is r1 bar now from this point a it is begins to move in one particular path so along the acb path and it is coming to the point b when the time is equal to instant time is equal to t2 okay so this is the position and the location position or location what is the position or location it is indicates the uh, position of the moving particle with respect to to origin of given coordinate system right this is a second quantity we are using to define the position or location of moving particle at particular moment at t is equal to t1 this is a position of particle and t is equal to t2 this is a position of particle to uh, particle at b okay that is one the next term what we are using to define the rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion is that is you know already so just you can write down that expressions so one is uh, another one we have to use distance distance one quantity we are using to describe the rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion suppose here the distance we are representing with s the quantity s we are representing okay distance what is the distance of the moving particle uh, when it is moving from point a to point b in the certain time interval what is the time interval in the in the time interval t2 minus t1 how much time it is taken the particle to go from a to b is that is we have to define the time interval here the time interval taken by the particle to go from a to b is t2 minus t1 seconds of time it should be taken to go from a to b it is go from a to b along this uh, curved path okay so distance is defined as the actual path length traveled by the particle between the two points in given time interval in this case particularly in the delta t time interval 
particle is going from A to B along this along this path, along this path. So the actual path length of this ACB is called the distance. So you know that is actual path length traveled by the particle when it is moving from one point to another point in the given time interval is the distance. Okay. So simply here we represent with the quantity S. S is equal to actual path length. Actual path length traveled by or traversed by actual path length traveled by the particle by moving particle moving particle between the two points between the two points in given time interval actual path length traveled by the moving particle between the two points in given time interval between the two points in given time interval is defined as distance distance traveled by the particle in the instant of time interval delta t time interval and uh, the other important factors about this one is this is the defining of distance and the units this distance is a length actual length length units are si units are meter so this is si units of this uh, distance is meter this is one units of the distance and the other one is here this is the second point this is the first point defining of the distance and the next point is one more important point about the distance distance is distance between the two points is actual path length traveled by the particle so it is going from a to b by this path so that path is uh, that can choose the path any path it can choose between the a to b the same path it can choose the path any different path it can choose so this is the dis uh, distance is a scalar quantity no specific direction it can choose any any path any n number of paths it can choose to go from a to b so there is no specific path there is no specific uh, direction so distance is a scalar quantity it is a uh, scalar quantity okay what is the characteristic of scalar quantity scalar quantity does not have in the direction only the magnitude here this quantity only the magnitude this length this length only the length the magnitude of this length so no direction scalar quantity and another important point is uh, scalar quantity okay so these are the three term important important fact uh, points about the distance defining of distance of a moving particle when it is going from one point to another point uh, in a given time interval okay this is a third parameter what we have to use the next one is displacement so now next factor we are using is displacement so displacement we are represented with uh, uh, delta r bar so change in position vector displacement is the change in position vector okay uh, what is the displacement here when t is equal to t1 the particle is at point a whose position when it is at a is r1 bar and uh, when it is at t is equal to t2 the particle is at point b whose position vector is b whose, whose final position vector is r2 bar so in the time interval delta t time interval its position is going from a to b so the change in position to represent the change in position we draw a vector from initial position to final position we draw a vector we draw a vector now a b bar a b bar is indicates the change in position delta r bar so here a b bar delta r bar so now this delta r bar indicates the displacement of the moving particle so therefore 
what you can write uh, displacement of a moving particle so now from this diagram i want to define the displacement of the moving particle okay to exact to define exactly the what is the displacement of the moving particle when it is going from a to b is that i am using the triangle oab for triangle oab in the triangle oab oa is indicates r1 bar ab indicates delta r bar ob indicates r2 bar so for triangle oab we are applying the triangle law of vector addition for triangle oab you apply the triangle law triangle law of vector addition what is the triangle law of vector addition when you are using the triangle law of vector addition according to the triangle law of vector addition two vectors are represented as the two sides of a triangle here this side is indicates vector r1 bar and this side is indicates the vector delta r bar so two sides are represented two vectors are represented by two sides of a triangle in this order then third side in reverse order indicates the resultant of these two so using that statement i can write here oa bar plus ab bar is equal to ob bar okay oa bar plus ab bar is equal to ob bar oa bar oa bar is equal to okay okay i can draw that one i can write right so this is a delta t the time interval between the a and b when it is at a t is equal to this is t1 uh, t1 minus t2 okay right so now i can take this is here hmm. now see here so triangle oab for the triangle oab we are applying the triangle law of vector addition triangle law of vector addition okay for the triangle oab we are going to apply triangle law of vector addition right so what is the triangle law of vector addition for the, when for any triangle when you are applying the triangle law vector addition two sides here side oa is indicates r1 bar side ab indicates delta r bar two sides i am representing two vectors r1 bar delta r bar in this order clockwise order then third side in opposite order reverse order anti clockwise order this is indicates third ob bar indicates the third vector so therefore for this triangle i am going to apply triangle law vector addition then what you are getting is that oa bar plus ab bar oa bar plus ab bar is equal to ob bar okay oa bar indicates r1 bar vector and ab bar indicates vector what is that vector delta r bar this vector i am representing delta r bar change in position okay this is equal to ob bar ob bar ob bar is equal to what r2 bar so now i want delta r bar delta r bar is equal to r2 bar minus r1 bar okay this delta r bar is called displacement vector displacement this is the displacement of the moving particle when it is going from 
a to b so when particle so actually we are defined here the displayed displacement displacement quantity of the moving particle delta r bar fourth one i think the fourth quantity is the displacement of the moving particle it is a vector quantity this is indicates uh, change in position vector displacement of the moving particle is indicates the change in position vector of the particle when it is going from one point to another point in given time interval okay right clearly from this expression you can understood that displacement of the moving particle is change in position vector so displacement is a vector quantity always whose direction displacement vector direction is always from initial position to final position so that is a straight away a straight away it is from initial position to final position so therefore that is having the single direction unique direction initial position to final position so it is a vector quantity right and as well as this is a direction straight line direction for straight line direction the distance between the two points is always minimum distance so therefore displacement vector magnitude is less than or equal to the uh, magnitude of the distance right now from this uh, from this expression we we are giving the points what are the points we are giving about the displacement of the moving particle important points about the moving particle is that first point is displacement is a vector quantity it is a vector quantity right so delta r bar it is a vector quantity it is a vector quantity displacement is a vector quantity and uh, the magnitude of this one i want the magnitude delta r bar magnitude so the magnitude of delta r bar is the shortest distance this is the shortest distance so magnitude of the displacement vector is equal to shortest distance shortest distance between the two points okay this is the first point so this is a first uh, conclusion from the definition of displacement vector of the moving particle and another one is another important point is this displacement vector delta r bar is it may be displacement vector may be for rectilinear motion may be positive it may be positive it may be negative it may be zero it can have the possible values uh, change in position vector is a displacement vector it may uh, it may have the positive value it may have the negative value it may have the zero value it can having the all possible values sir how sir how it is negative value sir how it is zero value sir positive value means uh, suppose when it is going for example in straight line uh, let us suppose it is straight line it is going from a to another point uh, it is going to the b when it is going from point a to point b the displacement vector is this is the displacement vector so now this is a delta r bar this is positive suppose uh, it is going a to b and then it is it is going a to b then it is coming to the b and then it is going to some other point c for example this is one case now in the second case suppose the particle is started from a then it is moving a to b right so then its direction is changing then it is moving towards the a and then it is moving to the another point c it is going to the another point c so actually initially it is moving this direction but the final displacement is this is the displacement so now here this is a delta r bar this is a delta r bar but initial movement of the particle is this direction so here this is the negative so here 
the change in position vector and the displacement vector is here negative with respect to to initial motion of the particle initially the particle is moving this direction but overall the displacement is is, is in opposite direction of motion of the particle so here this is a negative similarly if it is going uh, a to b then b to c then it is coming to c to a suppose in the third case the particle is started from a initial it is moving this direction is going to the b then its direction is changing then it is moving towards the a then again it is moving towards the c so when it is going to the c then its direction is changing then it is coming to the again finally it is coming to the a only so now actually at t is equal to zero it is started after the time t is equal to some time t time it is again come back to the same position initial position and final position is same position so means uh, the change in position is zero so displacement vector can act, can may have the value positive displacement negative displacement and zero displacement can have okay this is a second important point about the displacement right no need of this diagram just for our for your understanding and run this one so delta r bar may be positive may be negative may be zero this is a second important conclusion and uh, the other important one is that always uh, uh, this uh, delta s is greater than or equal to delta r bar magnitude what is this is here delta s is the distance the travel distance between the two points the travel distance between the two points always greater than or equal to mod of delta r bar actually delta r bar is a change in position mod delta bar mod mod of delta r bar is a magnitude of displacement magnitude of the displacement is the shortest distance between the two points so therefore always the magnet uh, the distance travel distance between the two points greater than or equal to magnitude of the displacement vector and uh, only the case when particle moving in the straight line when particle is moving in the straight line in that case only delta s is equal to delta magnitude of displacement distance is equal to magnitude of displacement this is the condition is satisfied for the straight line motion it is for the straight line motion when the particle moving in the straight line motion or rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion for that particle for that straight line motion distance is equal to magnitude of the displacement vector okay so again what are the units so this is also shortest distance so the units of displacement is also meters right note down these three points you note down this one can i go for the next one is this completed okay right so now now we can take the another quantity speed average speed and average velocity the next term we are using average speed and average velocity to describe the straight line motion or to describe the rectilinear motion we can use the another term average uh, speed so the next one is uh, fifth one average speed
average speed and average velocity average speed we are represented with v subscript average and the other one we can use that average velocity average velocity so average velocity we are represented with v bar average okay so here average you know how to calculate average uh, average of uh, uh, average speed we have to calculate here average velocity we have to calculate here so the average speed is defined for this particle particularly for example in the previous diagram this is a frame of reference system this is z axis this is x axis this is uh, y axis initially it is at point a at t is equal to t1 so this is a initial position vector r1 bar now from this position it is moving along this path to the another uh, it is moving along the a c b path it is reaches to the point b when it is when it is reaches the point b the instant time is equal to t2 so then the final position is this is a final position vector r2 bar so then it's the change in position its position changes from a to b this is a change in position change in position is the displacement vector delta r bar and this is actual path length the actual path length is the distance so now for this moving particle here i am considered this moving particle initially at that moment t is equal to t1 the particle is at point a in the space when it is at the point a whose position is r1 bar now from this point a it is moving along this path and it is coming to the point b and at the moment t is equal to t2 at this point its position vector is r2 bar now for this moving particle to go from a to b in the time interval how much time interval it is moving the time interval it is going t is equal to t1 to t is equal to t2 this is t2 minus t1 in this is the time interval in this time interval it is going a to b by this path okay now for that moving particle i want to calculate the average speed so the first one i am taking the defining of average speed for that moving particle average speed so here this is we are represented with the letter v average the average speed of the moving particle between the given time interval here the time interval t2 minus t1 delta t time interval in this time interval it is going a to b by this path suppose the actual path length is delta s means the actual path length traveled year to year actual path length is if i am considered that distance is actual path length delta s so average speed of average speed of the moving particle in the given time interval is defined as it is the ratio of total total distance total distance traveled by it is the ratio of it is the ratio of total distance traveled total distance traveled by time interval taken time taken total distance traveled by time taken okay so here particularly in this example what is the total distance traveled by the particle in the time interval in the given delta t time interval it is going a to b by this actual path this actual path length is how much it is traveled delta s traveled so therefore you can get here v average is equal to delta s by delta t okay this is defining of average speed of the moving particle in a rectilinear motion or the moving particle in one dimensional motion moving particle in one dimensional mo one dimensional motion what are the units of average speed distance traveled by time taken distance units are meter si units are meter time taken is second so therefore units this average speed units we can define 
so this is the defining the first factor is the defining of average speed in the given time interval and the second one is si units the si units of the average speed is so this is obviously meter per second meter per second because delta s is a distance distance si units are meter by the time interval second meter per second okay this is average speed regarding the average speed similarly similarly average velocity is what so this is the first one next one is uh, we want to define the second one is average velocity so now what is average velocity what is the difference between the average speed and average velocity so now average speed related to the distance traveled average velocity related to the so average velocity related to the this is uh, v bar average this average velocity related vector quantity it is related to the displacement so therefore it is a total displacement travel total displacement travel or uh, total displacement travel by time taken or change in position total change in position total change in position of moving particle between the two points total change in position of the moving particle between the two points by the time taken by the time taken now here what is the change in uh, total change in position of the particle between the two points in this delta t time interval it is going from point a to point b in this time interval the total change in position is what delta r bar so average velocity of the moving particle in given time interval is defined as it is a ratio of total change in position by time taken so this is equal to what can i write here total change in position is delta r bar by this is uh, delta t okay this is average velocity okay average velocity is equal to delta r bar delta r bar by delta t right so now you tell me what is the main difference between the average velocity and average speed where is the difference we are observing what is the difference in average velocity and average speed so average velocity is a vector quantity because it is total change in position change in position is a change in position is having the direction change in position is only unique direction that is a straight line direction from initial position to final position okay so straight line uh, it is a straight line from initial position to final position so it is a vector quantity average velocity is a vector quantity whose direction is from initial position to final position whereas the average velocity uh, average speed is a scalar quantity it, it is not having the direction right that is the first difference and what what is the other difference can you expect units are same the si units of this one is also same again for this is a first point for uh, uh, average velocity first point definition and the second point is here units the si units of average velocity again si units this is change in position magnitude is length only therefore this is meter per second this is a meter per second units same units only but uh, there is another important uh, di another difference is that uh, average speed not equal to uh, same again uh, uh, average velocity may be positive may be negative may be zero same as say the displacement displacement vector displacement having the value positive value negative value zero value i am given example also when displacement is positive when displacement is negative when displacement is zero we are given the example same thing this is uh, the average velocity the next point is next point about the average velocity is that v average average velocity of the moving particle maybe it is uh, it should be this average velocity 
may be positive it should be may be positive it may be positive it may be negative it may be zero when it is positive displacement is positive means position change in position is positive average velocity is positive change in position is negative average velocity is negative and uh, uh, change in position is zero average velocity is zero so here average velocity may may have the value positive value negative value zero value whereas the uh, whereas average speed average speed only it should be only it should be positive only average speed only positive that is never zero never negative this is only only average velocity only positive negative and zero it can have the zero that is another difference you remember the second difference first difference are, are all of you you know uh, average velocity is vector quantity and average speed is a scalar quantity that is you know but the second important difference average velocity it may have the positive value negative value zero value but average speed only the positive value only the positive value it is never decreases it should be increasing decreasing average velocity okay this is the second point right right so good very good who's that among very good so then this is a difference difference between the average speed and average velocity right so then with this uh, i want to give one more important point after that i want to give some examples workout examples so everybody clear up to this distance uh, displacement uh, average speed defining uh, average velocity and the differences the main differences between the average and uh, average velocity and uh, average speed right okay can you note down these points right 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 so next uh, now i am going to give one more important point so all of you you remember the main difference between the average speed and average velocity in the sense of the two differences second difference you remember this is uh, uh, second difference is the average speed is only positive but average velocity average velocity may be positive may be negative may be zero that is the second difference and the third one is third difference is when average velocity is equal to average speed uh, ma when magnitude of average velocity is equal to magnitude of average speed when it is moving in a straight line for a rectilinear motion for a rectilinear motion or for a straight line motion average speed magnitude and average speed average 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 speed magnitude uh, average velocity magnitude and average speed are equal right now we are going to give one more important uh, characteristic of a rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion one more parameter what is that uh, what is that good so some moving in a straight line right 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 very good very good sampar right so the next term we are taken here to describe the rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion is uh, what is that we are taken here instantaneous this is the next parameter what we are using instantaneous next term i think this is the so first one is time second one is distance uh, so first one is time second one is positional location third one distance fourth one displacement fifth one average speed and average velocity next this is the sixth term instantaneous instantaneous speed v instant instantaneous speed and the another term is instantaneous velocity instantaneous velocity okay uh, these are the other two terms we are using to describe the uh, motion in a straight line so this is v bar instantaneous so okay now we have to define these two terms also right 
now you tell me anyone what is a instantaneous speed and instantaneous velocity how it is different from the average velocity already you know what is the average speed you know what is the average velocity you know and how to calculate the average speed and average velocity we are seen that is a total distance by total time average speed and total displacement by total time or total change in position by total time is average velocity that is clear now there there is another terms uh, regarding this moving straight line uh, yes yes so moment at particular moment uh, speed of the moving particle at particular moment particular instant that is instantaneous speed similarly uh, but displacement at particular instant is called uh, instantaneous velocity okay now we will see detailedly how we can calculate this instantaneous speed and instantaneous velocity for the moving body in a motion in a straight line or in a rectilinear motion right right okay fine instant means particular moment speed of the particle at particular instant of the moving particular instant is known as instantaneous speed instantaneous velocity velocity of the particle at particular instant of the time is called instantaneous velocity so as is uh, what we are taken the average for, uh, what we are define how we are define the average velocity average speed and average velocity in the same way you can in the same way we can define this instantaneous speed and instantaneous velocity but with one extra condition as is how we are defined the average speed and average velocity in the same way we can define the instantaneous speed and instantaneous velocity but however however there is one extra condition they are having they are having the extra condition what is that extra condition is that uh, in the average speed calculation what how we are calculated average speed is equal to total distance traveled by the total time interval here in that case the time interval is very large time interval we are taking the time interval is very large time interval but here in the finding of instantaneous speed that time interval you can choose very 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 minute value as possible as you are taking the very minute value delta t you take as tends to as possible minimum value so then in that time interval whatever the distance travel that is the distance traveled in one unit time one particular instant so that is the distance equal to instantaneous speed and in that one instant time whatever the displacement whatever the change in position that change in position is equal to average uh, instantaneous velocity okay let me see here Uh, let me see here okay let me see the difference more clearly how we can differentiating the average speed with a instantaneous speed similarly how we can differentiating the instantaneous velocity with the average velocity right again the same moving particle here i am considered uh, this is our origin reference point with respect to this reference point uh, i can take the three dimensional frame of reference system this is x axis this is y axis this is z axis now with respect to to this origin of frame of reference system uh, let us suppose here uh, initially the particle is at one point a it is at point a when the particle is at point a the moment instant at that moment the instant time is t is equal to t1 when it when the particle is at a the instant moment is t1 seconds now from this point a this particle is moving along this along a curve along a particular curve it is traveling it is moving along a particular curve like this okay and it is going to the another point b you say it here like this
okay this is instantaneous speed v instant this is v bar instantaneous right so now it is going to another point b when it is reaches the point b at that moment uh, the instant time is t is equal to t2 so the particle is moving from point a to point b along this curved path okay this is a curved path along this curved path it is moving from a to b when it is a when it is at t is equal to t2 so its position is so on y axis i am taken displacement or i can take that is r bar position i am taken r bar and on x axis i am taken this is on x axis i am taken the time so now this is the called now this is the graph is indicates position time graph now for this moving particle i drawn the graph time versus position when at the when the time t is equal to t1 the particle position is somewhere here this is the initial position okay so this position initial position suppose i am taken this is r1 bar when it is at point b at t is equal to t2 its final position this is the final position r2 bar okay so on y axis i am taken the position vector of the moving particle and uh, on x axis i am taken the time so x axis is the time axis and y axis is the position axis or the displacement axis okay right now see here uh, now this is i am considered what is this is this is r1 bar this is total r2 bar now here i am draw one normal from here to here this is going to intercept at one point that is m now i am considered a m b so here this bm is equal to indicates delta r bar why because this is r1 bar this is total r2 bar this is total r2 bar this is r1 bar now this is equal to delta r bar this, this is equal to r2 bar minus r1 bar okay right now what is the change in position so always to define the change in position to define the change in position you draw the vector from initial position to final position so now i am going to draw the vector from initial position to final position straight away so now i get uh, so i am representing one vector with this dotted lines okay now ab bar what is indicates this ab bar this ab bar is the uh, chord so this chord ab bar indicates the delta r bar so now ab bar is the change in position of the particle in the time interval delta t time interval this delta t is equal to t2 minus t1 seconds in this time interval the change in position of the particle is this this chart is indicates the change in position delta r bar so ab bar is the chart that uh, chart it indicates the change in position right in the time interval how much time interval t2 minus t1 time interval so now here this is t is equal to t1 this is t is equal to t2 okay you take like this this is a graph like this you can take so this is moving along this path like this right so now say here so the time interval here this is the time interval delta t delta t is equal to t2 minus t1 in this time interval this is the change in position delta r is equal to r2 minus r1 now suppose here now suppose here you can now for example the time interval t2 minus t1 i am i am going to decreasing when i am when i am decreasing this time interval actually you can take like this t is equal to t1 t2 is equal to uh, t2 is equal to can i take this is t2 is equal to t1 plus delta t t is here t is equal to t1 
or t1 is equal to here the first time interval t1 is equal to t seconds second at the point b the t2 is equal to t plus delta t so when i am reducing this delta t uh, delta t time interval value so when i am reducing this delta t time interval what happens the the travel dis, uh, travel displacement of the moving particle means uh, what i am doing here now this delta t suppose if this delta t value i am tends to i am decreasing this delta t tends to zero delta t tends to zero but not zero delta t tends to zero. this meaning is that tends to zero not equal to zero tends to zero means this is this time interval we can reduce as possible as minimum value as possible as minimum value if i am reducing this time interval so when i am reducing this time interval reducing this time interval t2 to t1 so i can reducing this time interval t2 to only the t1 at the t1 only with very small time interval i can take very small time interval take i am taken so means i am taken very small time interval that is i am taken dt at the instant t is equal to, uh, at the instant t at the instant t only i can take very small minute time interval so i am taking the time interval here only so when i am taking the time interval very minute time interval obviously this displacement also what happens displacement also displacement is also decreases displacement is also decreases now this ab ka ab charge becomes uh, it is this ab charge is also reducing minimizing minimizing and coming to this point a only so when i am taken very 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 small finite time interval at particular moment so then at that moment uh, now this whatever the charge delta r bar now this delta r bar becomes at the point a only we get the new charge is like this you are getting we are getting the new charge this is a tangential 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 so what is the difference you are observing here when i am when i am taking the delta t tends to zero that is delta t is equal to i am taking very small time interval when i am taking very small time interval at the first moment at the t is equal to t1 whatever the average displacement up to that that average displacement is also minimizing to that point and then this charge becomes now a tangential passing through this point so now this tangential this tangential with the time axis the tangential with the time axis making an angle theta okay now this is a called the slope the sl the angle made by the tan the angle made by the tangential with this time axis is called the instantaneous velocity at the point a so now at the point a the instantaneous velocity is defined as or instantaneous speed if you consider the distance that is the speed if you consider the velocity that is the velocity so if you consider the display we are consider the displacement no? this is instantaneous velocity so instantaneous velocity at a particular point on at a particular position on the moving particle is defined as limit delta t tends to zero delta r bar by delta t so when delta t we bringing to very minute value delta t tends to zero then this delta r bar also very small value now this is a dr and now this is a dt so dr by dt this is dr and this is dt so dr bar by dt is equal to that is dr bar by dt okay this is equal to slope of the tangential at that point now at the point a so now this delta r bar becomes you are getting a tangential passing through this point now this tangential making an angle theta angle with the time axis so instantaneous velocity is equal to uh, tan theta tan theta so now you can clearly understood that instantaneous velocity of the moving particle 
is defined as velocity of the particle at a particular moment at a particular moment at what moment here t is equal to uh, t1 is equal to at the moment t at this moment uh, the displacement traveled per unit time this uh, change in position per unit time how you can calculate the change in position from this graph so from this graph the change in position you can calculate at that particular instant uh, you can draw the tangential to that point whatever the previously this is a displacement uh, now that displacement becomes a, a tangential a tangential at this point it is becomes a tangential this tangential is making an angle theta angle with this time axis so the that is the slope slope of the tangential simply we call the slope of the tangential at that point is equal to instantaneous speed and same similarly same similarly instantaneous speed what is the difference between the instantaneous velocity and instantaneous speed instantaneous velocity related to the change in position instantaneous speed related to the change in uh, travel distance so therefore as is b instantaneous is equal to limit delta tends to zero this is uh, delta s by delta t delta s is the travel distance so when this is tends to zero the travel distance is very minute distance by dt this is equal to again this is tan theta slope of the tangential so previously you have one doubt sir you can explain again the what is the uh, slope of the tangential so here this is the at the point here this is the tangential so the slope of this tangential so slope of the tangential at the point a indicates instantaneous velocity at the point a suppose if i am considered one more point some other point suppose i am considered one point here at the at this point at this instant suppose at this instant this is a tangential so this tangential making an angle with the axis is some other angle so here the velocity instantaneous velocity is different so means point to point instant to instant the tangential slope is the tangential slope at a particular point is indicates at that point instantaneous velocity instantaneous speed so here the slope of the tangential at a particular instant if i am taken at this instant at a, at the instant t is equal to t1 this is a particle at point a on the path at this point a this is a tangential suppose i am taken another instant at the instant suppose if the particle is here this is the tangential at this point so the slope of this tan tangential is here instantaneous speed here it is instantaneous speed so like that when displacement time graph is given to you or distance time graph is given to you on that uh, displacement time graph or the distance time graph if you draw the tangential at a particular instant that is uh, the tangent slope of the tangential is indicates uh, instantaneous velocity instantaneous speed so velocity at particular instant of time speed at particular instant of time when graph is given you calculate the tangential slope of the tangential at particular instant that is equal to instantaneous velocity if the graph is between the distance and time you get the instantaneous velocity and uh, there is one more uh, difference you have to observe one more important point we are observing about the instantaneous velocity and instantaneous this is instantaneous velocity expression this is instantaneous speed expression and there is one more important uh, uh, common uh, common factor between the instantaneous speed and instantaneous velocity you know average speed and average average speed and average average uh, velocity may or may not equal when you taking the uh, uh, the comparison between the average speed and average velocity average speed average velocity may or may not equal to the average speed when it is equal uh, is that when it is moving in a straight line but here uh, what is here the other important condition other characteristic the magnitude of instantaneous velocity v instant bar v instant bar is equal to v instantaneous always always at any moment for moving particle at any instant 
magnitude of instantaneous speed is equal to in uh, magnitude of instantaneous velocity is equal to magnitude of instantaneous speed only difference is what instantaneous velocity is the direction along the displacement direction at that moment and instantaneous speed is no direction no direction right this is the second important second important uh, relation between the instantaneous speed and instantaneous velocity instantaneous velocity magnitude instantaneous speed magnitude both are equal but only the it is having direction it is just not having direction okay okay i will i will explain again but the thing is let me you tell me uh, where you are unable to receiving the point i am again discussing again i am taking the explanation but here where you are feeling inconvenient in this uh, explanation okay you note down this first of all you note down this one again i am taking the diagram and i will be again explain to you okay okay i will discuss again because this is most important one because whenever uh, regarding the uh, body moving in a straight line or body moving in a plane when the quantities are given to you about that moving body you can from the given information you have to identify the nature of moving body characteristics to define the nature of the moving body characteristics you are clearly able to differentiate this quantities uh, what is the difference between the instantaneous velocity and instantaneous speed and what is the difference between average velocity and average speed of the moving body and that that things if you are clearly able to understanding that differences then we can make the calculations easy okay anyhow i will give okay again i will explain this is let me see again first you write down this is clearly this is the first point and this is the second point the second important point about the the relation between the relation between the instantaneous velocity instantaneous speed and instantaneous velocity okay fine now see here this is the uh, with respect to, to uh, with respect to, to origin we are considered this is a frame of reference system cartesian coordinate system with respect to the cartesian coordinate system initially particle is at point a at the moment t is equal to t1 at t is equal to t1 particle is at point a so i am representing on x axis time moment t1 and its position on y axis its position is i am representing r1 bar when it is at a its position is r1 bar and uh, at that moment time is equal to t t is equal to t1 now then it is begins to move along this curved path it is moving along this curved path this is the curved path along this curved path it is moving and then it is going to finally to this point b when it is going to the point b at that moment the instant time is equal to t2 means the moving particle is going to the point b when at time is equal to t2 okay right so to go from a to b by this uh, by this geometrical path a to b the time interval how much time interval taken is here t2 minus t1 time interval taken right so that is i am representing when it is at point b the instant is t2 instant and its position is on position vector r2 bar point b position on position vector is r2 bar final position is r2 bar 
initial position is r1 bar so then what is the change in position change in position we are taken in y axis na the change in position is delta r bar is year to year delta r bar this is r1 bar this is r1 bar this is r2 bar so change in position b to so i draw from this point b so from this initial position i draw year one normal and from this final position i draw one normal so is going to intercept at point m now this m to b this m to b on y axis is equal to delta r bar change in position this delta r bar is equal to r2 bar minus r1 bar okay right so now you see here now see here change in position i am defining initial position is point a final position is point b so change in position change in position is from point a to point b so therefore i draw the vector from a to b a b bar a b bar is the delta r bar change in position vector for the particle when going from a to b delta r bar that is for the change in time interval how much time interval for delta t time interval the change in position is a b bar delta r bar next what we are going to change on that one is that so if this delta t if this delta t time interval actually delta t is equal to t2 minus t1 if this time interval i am going to minimizing to zero so here i am representing that is clearly the first when it is at point a the instant time is i am considered t1 t1 is equal to t the first moment t1 is equal to t seconds when it is coming to the b the instant is the second instant at that instant the time is t plus delta t means how much time it is taken to go from uh, position a to position b is delta t time it is taken now what i am doing here this delta t time interval i am reducing this delta t time interval i am reducing to this t1 so this time interval i am taken very small time interval so when i am uh, reducing this delta t value is as possible as tends to zero when i am taken this delta t is equal zero t2 becomes t1 if i am taken delta t is equal zero then t2 becomes t1 so by reducing the delta t tends to zero i am taking the instant moment at t is equal to instant moment at t1 is equal to t but not zero delta t tends to zero means that reducing the time interval as possible as minimum but not zero so therefore now from t1 is equal to t i am taken very small time interval how much time interval i am taken here dt time interval i am taken very small interval very small very small interval very minute interval what is the possible mean interval for example when t is equal to when t1 is equal to 10 seconds next interval i can take n the dt is equal to i can take next one second means as possible as minimum time interval i can take so i am reducing this time interval is very as possible as minimum time interval so i am reducing this delta t to the t1 so very small value i am taken when this time interval i am reducing the travel displacement also what happens the travel it is actually for the delta t time interval the change in position is delta r bar a to b is the change in position this much of position it is changes but whenever this delta t you are reducing or you are decreasing to very minute value dt value we are decreasing to very minute value this position also this this displacement travel displacement change in position also decreases decreases so the displacement dr bar also decreasing and it is travels uh, uh, it is almost all it is at the same point only because very small time interval we are taken so in this small time interval 
the travel displacement is also very less so therefore obviously now this delta r bar is ab bar also is decreasing towards the point a so decreasing towards the point a it is coming to point a only so therefore for this very minute time interval now this delta r bar is equal to a straight line passing through this point straight line passing through this point so now this straight line passing through this point a is the tangential at the point a how you are getting this tangential because this delta r is reducing now delta r reducing 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 and it is coming to the point a now dr is very less magnitude so therefore it is passing a straight line passing through this like this so now this is a tangential so now when you are reducing the time interval delta t becomes the dt one second now this dr bar becomes the a tangential passing through the point a previously this is ab bar delta r bar previously for the delta t time interval delta r bar is this is a delta r bar but whenever dt is equal to very minute value now this delta r bar is becomes the straight line passing through this point passing through this point now this point becomes the tangential this is the tangential passing through the point a so the slope of this tangential the slope of the tangential with this time axis so this tangential making an angle theta angle with this time axis so whatever the the tan theta the slope of this tangential slope of the tangential is tan theta that tan theta is equal to instantaneous velocity okay so nothing but what is the instantaneous velocity from this graphical representation you can straight away you can remember instantaneous velocity of the particle moving in a straight line is equal to slope of a tangential at a particular moment at the moment t1 is equal to t the particle is at point a at the point a the tangential is this is a tangential the slope of the tangential is instantaneous velocity at the at this t1 instant suppose when i am considered another instant at t is equal to some other instant if it is at some other point suppose if it is here at this instant this is the tangential direction so now the tangential with the time axis making some other angle then the slope of this tangential is here the instantaneous speed means here instantaneous speed of the moving particle is defined as slope of the displacement time graph at that particular instant of time and that is equal to what the displacement traveled at that moment displacement traveled at that instant so therefore graphically by using the displacement time graph we can calculate the instantaneous speed and definition theoretical definition is instantaneous speed per particular unit of time are you getting this point clear all of you getting this point so when displacement time graph or distance time graph is given you can find the tangential slope of the tangential at particular point particular instant slope of the displacement time graph at particular instant is indicates the instantaneous velocity and theoretically that is equal to displacement traveled at particular time okay just write down you write down uh, from this equation you can just uh, write one theoretical statement from the displacement time graph from the displacement time graph the instantaneous velocity of the moving particle is equal to the instantaneous velocity of the moving particle at particular instant is equal to 
slope of the tangential slope of the tangential drawn at that point slope of the tangential drawn at that point at that instant at that point at that instant this is a tangential the tangential slope that is the definition of instantaneous velocity same thing instantaneous speed okay and the second point is most important magnitude of instantaneous speed magnitude of instantaneous velocity instantaneous velocity magnitude and the magnitude of instantaneous speed both are same this is the second important observation magnitude of instantaneous velocity equal to magnitude of instantaneous speed but average speed magnitude not equal to average velocity magnitude but here their magnitudes are equal both are same magnitude this is having the direction this is not having the direction okay right right we do the some problems tomorrow class we do the problems on this basic characteristics or basic parameters of the rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion okay right thank you